Hey everyone and welcome to another video. This one's going to be a little different than my usual videos. Today we're going to be comparing the operations of a hump yard versus one that utilizes flat track switching. We'll be looking at two CSX facilities, Parsons Yard in Columbus, Ohio and the Queensgate Yard in Cincinnati. As usual, the first part will be sped up to show how things work and then the second half of the video will be the normal speed footage. As you can tell, Parsons Yard is much smaller than Queensgate. However, it does utilize electronic switches, which increases its efficiency. First up, we'll look at how a hump yard sorts cars. A string of cars is pushed up the hump and then gravity does the rest. Well, it's not exactly that simple. Here you can see the hump conductor or pin puller in action. They walk along the cars and uncouple the one or ones that need to be sorted. In this case, he's going to uncouple that white tank car up front. You can see he gets in between the cars, grabs the pin and pulls up on it as the cars reach the crest of the hump. From there, the tank car will slowly pull away as gravity does its thing. The pin puller then goes to the next cut point. Those two coil cars are going to the same place, so he's going to release them both together. Again, he walks to the crest of the hump and then gravity pulls them away from the string of cars. Here's a different view of some other cars to show you what happens next. If you look closely, it looks like someone is training. I think that because I see an orange vest. Everyone usually wears a green vest that I see. As they walk away, that means the car has been cut and is now rolling toward the bowl. Look closer and you'll see another worker ready to cut that auto rack next in line. We're going to adjust our view slightly to focus on the retarder. That's the dark area in the center of your screen. Think of it as brakes for these rolling cars. It works by squeezing the flanges of the cars as they go by. Modern retarders are controlled by a computer to apply only the amount of brake pressure needed to allow that car to get where it needs to go, but not too much to allow it to cause damage when it connects with another car. Here's a look at the retarders. In Queensgate, the cars will go through three sets of them, one on the hump, Another is they get to a different grouping of tracks in the bowl, and finally it will pass through this group of individual retarders on tracks. I'm going to zoom in a bit and show you how it actually works. You can see next to the rails on the far side of each track has several mechanical devices. Those are what squeezes the retarder against the wheel flange. On these, they're only on one side of the track, but the previous two have retarders on both tracks. As the car comes through, those machines squeeze the rail together and slow the car down. I would not want to get my hand or foot caught in that. On the closer rail of each track, you can see there's a guide rail to keep the car from derailing. Well, let's back up and watch the whole process in action for a bit. I've seen as many as four cars be sorted as a group. You can see why hump yards are so efficient. They can just fire off cars with very little weight, and each one of those track switches is electronically controlled. Each car has a radio frequency identification tag to let the computer know what car is where. You have to be paying very close attention to see the switches reverse, but if you look closely at this one where the arrow is pointing, that hopper barely clears the switch and it already lines itself for a straight movement for the next car. Let's check that out once more. As the second car follows, notice the retarder and how it springs back once the car is through. The crews here can go through an average cut of cars in just about 10 or 15 minutes from what I've seen. A little wider view shows us these cars could probably make it to the end of the bowl track. I'm not sure what's in place to keep them from rolling on out the back if they're the first car cut to that track. I don't see another set of retarders on the exit of the track. My guess is they either spot a car at the end first or the first cars aren't given enough speed to reach the end and they keep everything else in the bowl. If you know, please do let me know. Alright, let's check out the flat track switching in Parsons Yard. The goal is the same, separate the cars and get them in the correct order on the designated track for where they need to go as efficiently as possible. I've heard two different terms in regard to flat track switching, kicking cars and shoving cars. 
I think they're pretty much synonymous, but for this video, when I say kicking a car, I'll be referring to when the crew pushes a car and then releases or kicks it. I'll use shoving when the crew pushes the car into position and couples it to the other cars and then releases it. So this first move we're seeing, I would say that this was a shove move because the crew just spotted that car in place. Notice how these tracks are all electronic too. My guess is CSX and I'm sure other companies are upgrading these medium sized yards as well to improve their efficiency. As our crew pulls forward, notice this green indicator light. Watch as it changes to orange, indicating the switch is now lined for a diverging move. A moment later, and they begin shoving into the track. The conductor holds up the pin and the train pulls away. They spotted that high top car. I think it's a gondola. The crew pulls beyond that same switch and this time we can see it returns to a straight line movement as the signal changes from orange back to green. We can look down the track and see where this next cut will head by finding the first orange signal indication. Also notice how the bottom left orange indicator lights up when the car enters the switch block. This cut will be heading into that track just past the signal board or track board with the red lettering on it. Also, I just noticed this. The track next door has a car inspector on it. You can see the blue markers in front indicating someone is working and no car should be shoved into those tracks. We can also see the switch signals all light up with orange in the lower left because each one detects a car in its block. Now this move also highlights just how dangerous rail yards can be. If either crew wasn't paying attention, that car inspector could easily get hit by this shove movement. Well now let's check out some cars being kicked. Here we see a single and then two tank cars on their way. A battery change and now the snow's starting to pick up. Here we see two hopper cars being kicked. A little while later and we see this tank car being kicked. We see the conductor reverse the switch and confirm it's aligned and then another tank car is sent down the tracks. A wider view shows us two more tank cars being sorted. I'm not sure why CSX only upgraded that other portion of the yard to have those remote controlled switches, but we can see that this conductor is going back and forth to get the correct routing. A slightly lower angle gives us another view of some tank cars being kicked only two left on this cut of cars. Well, as the engines go out of sight, that ends our look at flat track switching versus hump yards. What do you think? Do you like watching one more than the other? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. There's a lot of extra footage from both yards I left out of this portion. You'll be able to see all of that in real time for the rest of the video. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Until our next trip, I hope you have a great day.
No, these engines aren't coupled together. They're sitting in this curve too bad. We can't get it to make. Hey, firm. If you would, then just pull back north enough to where we can high in on straight track, then, if you would. Go ahead, MDO. Hey, where are you at currently? Uh, I'm on uh, Spring Grove Road on the way to the hotel to uh, pick up a crew. Okay, uh, how, how long are you taking, roughly? I'll be at the hotel probably in about eight minutes. All right, thank you. Uh, is there any, is that, uh, the crew I got to pick up, I think, hold on one second.
I'm sitting here at Tower A. I'm still waiting to set on, but yeah, Tower A, number one track all the way up to Stockton, over. Uh, Brian, I can't go Stockton right now. All right, you can put it in up to the NAS. They're a call right for right now. They're over NAS, a call right number one. Understand, up to number one at Cold Rain for now, over. Let's get copy over. Let's out. Yes, I'll just make sure you can see it all there. Six track, uh, we'll drop off in sixteen seventeen car. Yeah. 
out here.
19 has been moved to normal position. Get this top switch. You can follow me if you want. All right, here we go.
Tower. 188. Car, 23. Two north. Uh, go through two south, we'll get on two to uh, three south. All right, two south and three south. One six over.
Of the Hill Grade 7, I'm 2414 to be dialed in when he's ready. Over. Crash, over. I'm up here.
CRP 1 out, big tail north end road crossing the spot. Yes, join line for that D5, back six tiles.
Doug, I got a 174 here at the office. Needs to ride up to the uh, north end there, about the 19 crossover. Copy that. At the machine, uh, they're just still cross this crossing. Drive right down the roadway there. I'll take you right down to the train.
Robin. Switches are lined in there, guys. Someone needs to get down here and uh, dig into this tie out before we let the scales in. Come by by the mechanic and have him put this light back on, but what do you need? I'll be back up there.
striking VA one to the Athens. A little bit if you would want. Uh, we'll let them work into that switch, and then uh, we'll back up once they get all in there. Come on, stop, Annie. Just in case they holler first, if uh, either shoot me a text or, or holler at me on 55 if you would. Roger that, buddy. Thanks for your help, sir. Thank you. What up? More to Shamlin, let's go over to 55, over. Copy that, go on to 55. Central Z744, 18, over. Z744, 18, over. They're ready to depart, Parsons. I've got a markup for you when you're ready. All right, what you got? Our lead engine, that'll be a BPRR3889. Our car count will be 6464 by 9 NINE. We are 9,000 tons, 4,500 feet, and west hole number one. Over. I got that. Uh... West on number one. Right on one to clear the diamond there. Be your signal there at the high street. Thank you much. Appreciate it.
389 West Swan Approach, High Street, 744 up. Prepping today, JB. Person fly one night. Getting to the uppers now. He'll get the uppers back, but I'm um, okay to okay to line yourself back out at three and so they get the uppers back. We'll go to town. Out with line 61 on that next cut, everything should be. Everything should fit. Copy that, line 61. Foreman, over. Three stops, good OC. Call three, sample, no OC for the conductor. Roger, I three. I'm digging through that shit, fine plate. Left dispatcher Jacks will. I want to five eighteen and four hundred uh, LF. I want to five uh, eighteen four hundred. Go ahead.
Parsons, over. Parsons, answer what? All right, Jamie. Uh, I got a derail for now on the short divider lead, and then I have one in front of the 17 switch and one in the 18 track, over. That is correct. Uh, I'm heading towards the west end. I'll probably just be using locking key there. All right. Thanks. Yep. There, uh, there's no trains down this way today, right? East end, there or not. Man, you're my hero today. Rail down, double check.
office.
about 55 up. These brakes will knock the brakes off back here. I'm looking at this video board here. If you could, uh, the one that has the East End trailer, PTD, and the part of Main West, if you could get those two on my screen, change to ZRD through Gene East End.
line for eight. Andy, come on back about seven cars for now. Back to seven, clear lined up. Three, two, three, four.
Where, where you got the drone from? Was it online? Lined up, Jason Jackson, quick. Back in that town. Back in that town. About a half car easy, Andy. I, I got where we're at. We're on a curve. I gotta get you occupying the switch. Bump ahead about half a car. Dusky dispatcher over. Uh, CAM Y01, permission to reverse, Western 1, Bandit LM Cabin. Copy that, CAM Y01, is your permission to reverse on Western 1 between Bandit LM Cabin? Uh, looking for a light over. Thank you. 
Three, four, and a clear line of all tracks. Back five to tie. Four, three more. Last car. Half. Fifteen feet. Ten. Clear stretch. Double 1334, stand by. Thank you, sir. 
134, that'll do. Test him on the step. Not do nothing. Thirty-four. I'm in the clear. Ball track. Test may drop three a.m.
that knuckle open on my side or I didn't look at it? It's up.
on this end. Do a brake test though. Three step ahead. Three two three four. Clear gust I need about uh, six or so. And seven maybe. Five more from here. Thirty-two, thirty-four, in the clear, Bob. Seven. Good for at least uh, twenty there. Uh, all right, you want to repeat? Bye, Zoop. I just call his wife and tell, him, tell her that he's going to have to stay at the motel tonight because it looks like it's going to be midnight or so.
moving down there? By the time he said all that should be good. Three, two, three, four. Could you see the L78 on? L78, uh, long completely out of it. 
for something. I'm going to come to the CTC and try it again, please don't. No, I had to copy that day. Uh, yeah, watch for a uh, signal. No. Get some run room on this. Bird kick. Stay ahead. One car. Uh, I, you know, they had a they had a train blocking that switch. I just couldn't go all the way back there. I wasn't even paying attention. Let's get a 
dispatch, y'all. Good stretch, stand by. Five cars, clear of all tracks.
In the clear, 13. Ready. Thank you. Three, two, three, four, in the clear. Over. Again, over. Oh. 
car. Dispatcher, Jack Slover.
I'll pull what I can to the right and then I'll skip up and pull them gray tires up there. 